Have you ever pondered how mental health policies impact society politically? Welcome to the labyrinth of mental health policies, a complex matrix where politics and healthcare intertwine. The political implications of these policies are broad and far-reaching, affecting individuals, communities, and the fabric of our society as a whole. We often think of mental health policies as prescriptions for treatment or guidelines for care. However, they are much more than that. They are political instruments that shape our collective approach to mental health, influencing how resources are allocated, how care is delivered, and how mental health is understood and perceived within our society. The interplay between mental health policies and politics is intricate and multifaceted. It's not just about who gets access to what services and when, but also about who makes these decisions, how they are made, and the ideologies that underpin them. It's about power and control, about values and beliefs, about who we are as a society and what we aspire to be. Understanding this relationship is crucial. It can help us see why certain policies are implemented while others are not why certain groups are prioritized over others, why some interventions are favored while others are overlooked. It can help us navigate the political landscape of mental health, a terrain that is often fraught with tension and conflict, but also ripe with opportunities for change and improvement. Yet we cannot discuss mental health policies without addressing the stigma associated with mental health. This stigma, deeply ingrained in our culture and society, can influence policymaking, shaping the priorities and decisions of our political leaders. It can drive policies that marginalize and discriminate, that perpetuate misconceptions and stereotypes, that silence voices and erase experiences. But it can also galvanize action, inspire advocacy, and fuel efforts to reform and transform our mental health system. Navigating the political landscape of mental health policies can be a challenging but necessary endeavor. As we delve deeper into this complex world, let us remember that our ultimate goal is to foster a society where mental health is valued and prioritized, where care is accessible and equitable, and where stigma is eradicated. Because mental health is not just a personal issue, it's a political one. How does politics influence mental health policies, and vice versa? This question opens the doors to an intricate dance of influence and power that shapes the way we approach mental health. Politics, at its core, is about the distribution of resources and power. This principle applies to mental health as well. Political ideologies can shape mental health policies, determining who gets access to what resources and when. For instance, a government with a focus on social welfare might prioritize public mental health services, ensuring everyone has access to care. On the other hand, a government leaning towards individual responsibility might favor private sector solutions, potentially limiting access for some parts of the population, but the influence doesn't stop there. These policies, in turn, can impact political scenarios. Let's say a government implements a mental health policy that doesn't resonate with the public. The backlash could lead to a shift in political power in the next election. Conversely, a well-received policy could strengthen a government's position. In this way, mental health becomes a political tool, wielded for power and influence. And let's not forget the role of political advocacy in mental health. Advocacy groups can significantly influence policy decisions, pushing for changes that reflect the needs of those they represent. They can fight for increased funding, better access to services, and stronger protections for those with mental health conditions. Their work can shift public opinion and, by extension, political will. But advocacy isn't just about influencing policy, it's also about holding governments accountable. Advocacy groups can shine a light on ineffective policies or gaps in services, driving pressure for change. They serve as an essential check and balance in the political landscape of mental health. The interconnection between politics and mental health is a complex and dynamic relationship. It underscores the importance of informed, empathetic, and proactive policymaking. And it reminds us that mental health isn't just a personal issue, it's a societal one, deeply intertwined with the political fabric of our communities. The politics of mental health is a two-way street, with impacts reverberating in both directions. What role do policymakers play in shaping mental health policies? That's a question we should all be asking. Policymakers wield considerable influence in the realm of mental health. Their decisions, whether they're about funding, accessibility, or the way mental health is talked about, can significantly shape public perceptions and attitudes. Think about it. When a policymaker decides to prioritize mental health in their agenda, it sends a powerful message. It says that mental health matters, 
that it's as important as physical health, that it deserves our attention and resources. This can help to break down the stigma that so often surrounds mental health, encouraging people to seek help when they need it. But policymakers don't just shape public opinion. Their decisions also have a direct impact on the quality and availability of mental health care. When they choose to invest in mental health services, they're ensuring that more people can access the help they need. When they push for better training for mental health professionals, they're improving the standard of care. Of course, informed policymaking is crucial here. Policymakers need to understand the complexities of mental health, the challenges faced by those living with mental health conditions, and the most effective strategies for addressing these issues. They must consider the evidence, listen to the voices of those affected, and make decisions that will truly make a difference. In this way, policymakers can play a pivotal role in improving mental health outcomes. They can help to create a society where mental health is valued and prioritized, where people feel able to talk about their mental health without fear of judgment, and where quality mental health care is accessible to all. So yes, policymakers have a significant role to play in shaping mental health policies. They hold the keys to change, to progress, to better mental health for everyone. Policymakers hold the reins when it comes to shaping public opinion and approach towards mental health. It's a responsibility that should not be taken lightly, and a role that could truly transform lives. What challenges do policymakers face when crafting mental health policies? This pivotal question leads us into the heart of our discussion, the obstacles that lie in the path of creating effective mental health policies. One of the most significant challenges is resource allocation. Mental health is often not prioritized in the allocation of funds, resulting in a lack of resources for mental health services. This is further complicated by the need to distribute resources equitably among various mental health disorders, each with its own unique needs. The lack of resources can have a profound impact, leaving those in need of services without access to care. The stigma surrounding mental health poses another significant challenge. Despite advancements in understanding, mental health disorders are still often perceived negatively, leading to discrimination and isolation. This stigma can deter individuals from seeking help and can influence policy decisions, as lawmakers may hesitate to allocate resources to an area associated with such negative perceptions. Furthermore, the complexity of mental health demands a multidisciplinary approach. Mental health is intertwined with various other sectors such as education, employment, and housing. It's not just about providing medical care, it's about creating an environment that supports mental well-being. Crafting policies that consider all these interconnections is a challenging but necessary task. There's also the challenge of ensuring that policies are evidence-based. Mental health is a rapidly evolving field, with new research continuously emerging. Policymakers must stay abreast of these developments to ensure that policies reflect the most current understanding of mental health. Lastly, the need for inclusivity cannot be overstated. Mental health policies must cater to the needs of all individuals, regardless of age, race, gender, or socioeconomic status. This inclusivity is not just about fairness, it's about effectiveness. Policies that fail to consider the diverse needs of the population are unlikely to achieve their intended outcomes. Overcoming these challenges can pave the way for more effective mental health policies. Crafting policies that address these challenges is a daunting task, but it is one that holds the potential to transform countless lives. How can we improve mental health policies for the better? That's the million dollar question. As we approach the end of our discussion, let's delve into some potential ways we could enhance the current state of mental health policies. Firstly, policies need to be inclusive. Mental health is not a one-size-fits-all issue. It affects people of all ages, races, genders, and socioeconomic statuses. Policies should reflect this diversity. They should address the unique needs of different populations, from children and adolescents, to the elderly, to those in marginalized communities. Ensuring everyone has access to appropriate mental health care is a fundamental step towards healthier societies. Secondly, we need to increase funding for mental health. This is not just about funding treatment services, but also research into mental health. It's about understanding the root causes, the most effective treatments, and how to prevent mental health issues from developing in the first place. The old saying goes, you have to spend money to make money, and the same principle applies here. Investing in mental health now can lead to significant savings down the line, both in terms of healthcare costs and societal impacts. Thirdly, 
we need to bring mental health into the public discourse. Mental health has often been stigmatized and misunderstood, leading many to suffer in silence. By openly talking about mental health, we can break down these barriers and create a society where mental health is viewed just as importantly as physical health. But remember, these are not silver bullet solutions. They require ongoing commitment, the willingness to learn from mistakes, and the courage to challenge the status quo. They require collaboration between policymakers, healthcare providers, researchers, and the public. Improving mental health policies requires a concerted effort from all stakeholders, from policymakers to the general public. Every single one of us plays a part in this. It's time we start recognizing mental health for what it is, not a personal failing, but a public health issue that demands our collective attention and action. In conclusion, mental health policies are not just about health, but also about politics. They intertwine with societal issues and policymakers play a significant role. Understanding the political dimension can help us treat mental health not merely as a medical issue, but a societal one too.